This has been one of the most requested videos by far. This is how to make a GUI in Java and we're gonna do something super basic today. It's a GUI with one button and one label and when you click the button, it changes the label. But before we get started, my name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week so if you might be interested in seeing that, then please consider subscribing. I also have my own merch. It says I have no idea what I'm doing. I heard some people say it'd be great for a hackathon or just in class. So if you want your I have no idea what I'm doing shirt, you can get 10% off with the coupon code down below. And yeah, let's get started with the GUI. So we're in Eclipse. We're just gonna go to file new Java project as usual. We'll call it our first GUI. Finish. And then on source, we'll go to new class. Call it GUI with a main method and finish. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. Some people call it GUI, but students, professors, and professional software engineers all call it a GUI. This is like anything you see here. Discord, Sublime Text, Notebook, uh, Chrome, really anything that has graphics when you pull it up with buttons and colors is a GUI. And this is one of my favorite parts of computer science, so I'm excited to share this with you right now. So how do you make a GUI? There are one million ways to make a GUI based on what language you're using. In Java, there is a popular one that is very outdated, <laughs> but teaches you the basic concepts. It's called Swing. So to start using Swing and making a GUI, let's do some setup here. Our GUI class is going to be our GUI object, and we're going to make it in the main method. And then when we make it, when we hit run, it'll run the main method, which will make it using this constructor, new GUI, which will then bring up the window. So now that we've made this little constructor here, we have to implement the constructor. So now we make our constructor called GUI. Now when we run main, we'll create a new GUI object, which goes to the constructor here, which is basically a method, and we'll set up the frame, the layout, and everything in here. The first thing we want to make is the frame, the window, and that's called JFrame. So we make a JFrame object, just like any other object. This format. There are red underlines because we have to import it from the swing library. So we do import JFrame javax.swing throws that import statement at the top, and now we can use the JFrame. Now the frame's basically the window, but we wanna put stuff inside the window. We gotta have some sort of layout. And that's where the panel comes in, so we have to make a J panel. Just like any other object, we're just saying the name of the object and calling the constructor. Boom, import that too. Now that we've got these objects, we've got to use them. To use an object, you write the name and do a dot, and then it brings up a bunch of methods and variables you can do with it. Panel has a lot, because it's really flexible. A common series of things to do to your panel to get it set up is set up the border from the frame, set the layout, and then add elements to the layout. So we'll just do the border, set border. Now if we hover over set border, we see that what goes into parentheses, the parameter, is a border object. And this is where a lot of people will get stuck and be like, well, I don't know how to make a border object. There's an easy way to do this, and it just takes a little Google searching. Type border factory dot create. And there's a lot of options here, but we're just going to do create empty border. We get a red underline because we need to import the border factory, also from Swing. It's all helping us just make a GUI. And inside here, pass in parameters, width of the top, bottom, left, right. For formatting, we're gonna do top, bottom, 10 from the left, 30 from the right. And these are all in pixels, I believe. Now we'll set the layout, set layout. If we hover over set layout, we see it takes in a layout manager object. The one we're gonna use is called grid layout, so we create a grid layout just to match whatever's in the parameters. Just like we did here, we found a border thing and now we're finding a, what is it called? Layout manager thing. This takes in, well we need to import it, 
but the parameters, this is the default constructor, but you can enter rows and columns in here if you want. Don't worry about how I got this stuff. It's really just Google searching, honestly. But let me show you the working example before you get super bored. So we'll do frame.add, and you can see here there are multiple add methods, but we're gonna do the one with constraints. So we're gonna add our panel, and this will be border layouts dot center. A common thing to do to our frame is set default close operation and pass in jframe dot exit on close. Set the title, set title to our GUI. Frame dot pack, frame dot set visible true. This is all regular setup stuff. You'll see when using objects, there are kind of best practices and you'll see that sometimes you'll have to do multiple steps like this. So add the panel to the frame, set what happens when they close the frame with these options, set the title of the window, the frame, set the window to match a certain size, and set the window to be visible and in focus. So that's all this is. Don't feel like you have to memorize all this or how I got this. But yeah, Alex, shut up, just run it. And we get our little window. Get a little window here, it's resizable, but, um, and we can close it. But there's no buttons and there's no label. So what happened there is when we click run, it always shoots down to the main method. And the main method has new GUI, which creates a GUI object from this GUI class. This is the constructor since it's the name. And we treat the constructor like a method. We just do the stuff inside the curly braces. First, we create a JFrame object. Then we create a JPanel object. We set up the panel. Next, we added the panel to the frame. We set the default close operation, set the title, and some window options. So now let's add the button and then make it clickable and add that text label. We're just going to make a J button now called J button. Import that. In the constructor, we can pass the name of the button called click me, and we can add that to the panel, panel.add button. Now, if we run this, we'll see the same window, but we'll see a button on here. And that's pretty sweet. It's pretty big. Now let's add a label, a label, and the label will be number of clicks, I'll just set it hard-coded to zero right now. Import the J label, add it to the panel, and boom, we have a button and a label. But the button doesn't do anything and the label doesn't change. The reason the title is our GUI is because we set the title to our GUI. So we've got our button, a label, we want the number of clicks to go up when we click the button. So how do we do that? We have to set up the button to be able to listen to click events. So to do that, you use the button object just like any other object. You do button dot, and the one we're gonna do is add action listener. We're gonna type this in here. This means it goes to this class up here, the one it's already in, and uses an action listener method. So how do we get that magical action listener method inside of here? Because it's not in here, that's why it is a red underline. We need to do implements action listener. We have to import that. And now the red underline goes away, but implements means we have to take all the methods from action listener and put code in them. That's why we get this. We need to add the unimplemented methods, which is the action performed method. We want to increase the number of counts, which means we have to have a count to begin with. So to put it in the scope of all the methods, we need to put it up here. We'll say count starts at zero. And then once the button is click clicked, the action is performed. So we call the code in here. We want to increment the count. And then we want to set the label to number of clicks one, number of clicks two. Since this is in another method, 
it doesn't know what label is. It doesn't know the J label exists. So we have to bring it in the scope, which is up here. I'm just going to delete this and make it up here. J label label. And we might as well do the other ones too, just as good practice. We can make all of these private if we want to, which is also good practice, so that when we make a GUI object, the user doesn't have to worry about all these variables. It'll just be hidden. So we can just not have that object declaration, but we can keep the button there. That's fine. Now we know the label. So we can do label dot set text. And we'll set that text from number of clicks zero to number of clicks count. Save and run this. Now, when we click the button, it goes to the button, it creates the button. We add an action listener, this which implements action listener, and it'll just look for a method named action performed. Now the action performed method is tied to that button object, this. So when we click that button object, it listens and runs code inside of here. We increment the count, and then we set the count of the label. I thought this was a really cool example. I got this from um, a computer science um, website called HTTPS intro CS, CS Princeton. And this was one of their examples. I thought it was really cool, really simple concept just to get you the basics down and expose you to how GUIs work. Because we love all the pretty things, but how is that button tied to the code? How does that button change the text? The button listens to a click event from the user, which runs code, which changes other objects. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna make another GUI video um, a little more complex. Um, this is my first time making a GUI video like this, so I tried my best to explain things. Again, don't worry too much about like what all this border factory create empty border stuff is. Don't feel like you have to memorize it because this is all really just different layouts and stuff and it's, it can be kind of confusing. But we used what worked to get the concept through and then you can dive deeper into making it look how you want by doing quick Google searches on this code. So again, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you liked it. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.